Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Only noobs go online without protecting their data. Don't be a noob. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash inside. Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's the weekend roundup, guys. Big weekend if you're a Monster Hunter fan, because as you most certainly know, Monster Hunter Rise came out Friday on the Switch. So if you're like me, I'm stoked. I'm a Monster Hunter guy. But the big question, is it any good? How is it doing? Let's check the reviews. Well, according to Metacritic, pretty darn good. Good. It has a very solid 87 the last time I checked. Your mileage may vary. You're a gamer called the sixth main entry into the Monster Hunter franchise. The most accessible, deepest, and simply very best Monster Hunter to date. Wow, not bad. Ars Technica praised its transformative controls, saying that the mostly steady 30 FPS combat make this a must-own on Switch. GameSpot said that Rise still feels like a distinctly Monster Hunter game, even if it's more of a fully-fledged action title than any other entry in the series. So yeah, really good stuff. It sounds like they're taking some cues definitely from Monster Hunter World in terms of making it more accessible to a wider audience, maybe a little more casual friendly. I know we get a little nervous about that, but uh, it seems like the game is good. Spin interviewed producer Ryozo Sujimoto about the series, and he said that they definitely paid attention to feedback that players gave about Monster Hunter World and the Iceborne expansion, and they incorporated that feedback into Rise. For example, he said you can seamlessly travel through the map after starting a quest, and they've also implemented a weapon forge tree and shortcut controls for items, so some nice quality of life improvement stuff there. He added that the concept of Monster Hunter Rise is Monster Hunter, which can be played casually anytime, anywhere, with anyone. So, yeah. Looks cool. I, I've liked it so far. What I've played, uh, I'm still waiting to team up with people. I'm excited. It's also coming out to PC at some point early next year. Of course, Monster Hunter, wildly popular in Japan. At least one employer, I love these stories, is giving workers the day off so they can play. Jack Masaki, the CEO of Japanese VR developer Mark On, sent an email to the entire company saying that everyone was off on Friday when Monster Hunter came out, saying that it was due to the release of Monster Hunter Rise and the assumption that no one will be able to concentrate at work. Ah, it's this and Dragon Quest that Japan just shuts down for these. I love it. Capcom also has very big expectations for the game. That makes sense considering that Monster Hunter World was the first game in Capcom history to ship 15 million copies. Capcom execs told shareholders earlier this year that they expect to generate almost 20% more operating income this fiscal year, partly thanks to a promising start in pre-orders for Monster Hunter Rise. So there you go. Monster Hunter will see the initial sales probably in the weeks and months to come, but uh, it's looking good so far. All right, we'll get to the stories in just a second. But first, guys, let's talk about ExpressVPN a little bit more. This episode of Roundup brought to you by the good folks at ExpressVPN. Now, let's talk. I know none of you guys watch porn, but just in case you have friends that do, eh, you might want to pay attention. With everything going on in the world, currently governments have increased their surveillance. They're using your devices to track your location, movements, and in many countries, your internet activity. Don't get caught with your pants down, literally. One of the best ways to keep your online browsing activity private is by using ExpressVPN. Tell your friends who might enjoy that kind of thing. ExpressVPN, what does it do? It reroutes your internet connection through a secure encrypted server so you can browse anonymously without any spies looking over your shoulder. Look, I know you probably think, oh, BG, I just use incognito mode. I'm fine. Nobody can see all the hentai I watch on Pornhub, but you're wrong. Even with incognito mode, your internet service provider can see every website you visit, if you live on campus, shared Wi-Fi, so can your network administrator. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's why I use ExpressVPN when I go online. I recommend you do too. Without it, you're giving your ISP and whoever they feel like selling your data to free reign to look over your shoulder at all the freaky stuff you look at. So protect your privacy today. Get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Visit expressvpn.com slash roundup. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash roundup for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash roundup to learn more. Thank you to ExpressVPN. On to the rest of the stories. We have some more info about the alleged new Switch that's due out this year. The headline here, it's going to have an upgraded NVIDIA chip that will have improved graphics and processing. Bloomberg says the new Switch will be ready for the end of the year shopping season. Obviously, no official word yet, but a lot of details starting to leak out. We've heard the Switch will have 4K graphics, but how is that going to happen? Because the Switch is not exactly a 4K machine. Well, Bloomberg said the new console will support NVIDIA's 
Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS for short, a novel rendering technology. It uses artificial intelligence to deliver higher fidelity graphics more efficiently. So it seems like a little workaround, a little cheat there at the end. The new Switch is supposed to have a new OLED display, that seven incher from Samsung. When you plug it into a TV, it will have 4K visuals. Again, this is all sort of reported. Nothing's been confirmed. They also said it will have a better CPU, increased memory. One analyst said the move to support better graphics should get the Switch more support from outside developers. It will come with a price. Some analysts think it will retail for 400 bucks. That would be the most expensive Switch on the market. So we'll see. Meanwhile, Nintendo's pulling all those Mario 3D games off of the store at the end of the month. So if you want them, you got to get them now. Oh, and that one Fire Emblem game. All right, we've seen Microsoft make some eye-popping acquisitions over the last few years, uh, obviously when they bought Bethesda. Well, now they have another big target, Discord. Bloomberg reports that Microsoft is one of several companies in talks to buy Discord. The price, pretty hefty. 10 billion has been thrown around. We don't know who. There are apparently some other companies involved, but Bloomberg says Microsoft is in the running. No final deal has been made. Again, there are other suitors. Epic and Amazon have been rumored in the past about kind of sniffing around about buying Discord. You would think this feels like an acquisition target for a lot of possible people, but there's also a strong possibility. Might not happen at all. They cited a source that said Discord is more likely to go public and sell itself. So there you go. Guys, time to say goodbye to the PlayStation 3 and the PS Vita stores. They're going away. Various outlets are reporting that those stores, along with the PSP store, will close down in a few months. The Gamer reports that the PSP and PS3 stores will close July 2nd, and the PS Vita store will stay open until August 27th. After that, obviously, can't buy digital games or DLC for those platforms. No official word yet, but Sony is reportedly going to announce it at the end of the month. Uh, Sony should make another portable, by the way. Uh, I hear they're doing very well these days. All right, here's another interesting story. A group of ex-Blizzard leaders have raised almost 10 million bucks to build a new real-time strategy game. Ooh. This new studio is called Frost Giant Studios. Uh, definitely uh, sounds a little Blizzard-ish there. It was started by ex-Blizzard vets Tim Campbell and Tim Morton. They announced this week they had raised 5 million bucks in a second round of funding. You couple that with the first round, they've raised a total of 9.7 million from sources like the Korean Venture Capital fund, Kona Venture Partners, Global Founders Capital, a lot of the big boys. It makes sense that this studio would be working on an RTS. They have deep roots. Campbell was a lead campaign designer of Warcraft 3, The Frozen Throne, and Morton was a production director of Starcraft 2 and Command and Conquer Generals 2. They also announced that James Anhalt, who is the former Starcraft 2 lead engineer, has joined the studio as chief architect. So yeah, it'll be cool to see what this group comes up with. I could use another RTS. I, I feel like that genre, it, it it's got a little more life left in it. All right, time for a five second review. Well, there goes 5,000 hours of my life at a minimum. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Evil Genius 2 World Domination, a satirical spy-fi layer builder where you are the criminal mastermind. Construct your base, train your minions, defend your operations from the forces of justice, and achieve global domination. Comes to PC March 30th. I saw black clouds. After the unexpected death of a close friend, Christina returns to her hometown looking for answers, only to unearth a string of dark secrets. I saw black clouds is an interactive psychological thriller with supernatural elements and branching stories. Storylines. It comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch March 30th. Kingdom Hearts coming to PC. All of it. A bunch of the collections, pretty much all of the collections are coming, including Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 and 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, Kingdom Hearts 3, and the Remind DLC, and Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. It's a lot of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, have fun deciphering that plot from a Kingdom Hearts veteran. Uh, it's... It's a lot. Uh, they all arrive on PC March 30th. I love Kingdom Hearts. Become Symphonic in Narita Boy, a radical action adventure as a legendary pixel hero trapped as a mere echo within the digital kingdom. Discover the mysteries behind the Techno Sword, lock swords with the corrupt and tainted stallions, save the world. It comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch March 30th. Shelter 3, what happens when a leader falters? The matriarch needs your help to get to an important destination, but you must keep everyone safe along the way. Decide which paths to take as you lead the herd through the matriarch's forgotten places, but choose carefully for each path 
has its own shadows. It comes to PC March 30th. And finally, a big one, Outriders. Here we go. It has brutal and bloody combat that combines frenetic gunplay, violent powers, and deep RPG systems to create a true genre hybrid. Outriders is an RPG shooter with aggressive gunplay and intense action. Blood and gore is frequent and core to the experience. The Outriders' unique abilities are as violent as the shooting with bloody and gruesome methods for dispatching enemies. The world of Enoch is dark and desperate, and the characters that inhabit the world are equally so. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia April 1st. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. I hope you're having a great weekend. Stay safe. We'll see you soon.